Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Millennial Money. So this week we're going to talk about should you have a joint bank account? Damien's going to run through the pros and cons of having a joint bank account with your partner and then just to finish I'm going to summarise the things you need to think about before you do go and get a joint bank account. So to get started Damien what's the pros of getting a joint bank account? Okay so if you're going to have a joint bank account for anybody the obvious pro is if you're going to be paying joint bills because then all the money comes out of one account. It makes you all manage your money far easier if it all goes into one place. It also encourages you to build an element of trust with that person. If you've got a partner, you're going to have to do that anyway when it comes to finances. I remember when I had to do it with my now wife, getting the joint account was a, it felt like a big decision, and it, and it is, but you've got to build enough trust, as I'll come on to in the cons as to the reasons why. Um, it makes it easier when you're paying your rent and mortgage that it comes from a joint account because then you can both control it and you both put money into it. Um, it can prevent arguments over money. It can mean that if one member dies, then you have access to that money straight away. So in my case, if I was to die, we've got a joint account, then my wife can access the money straight away without having to go through um, probate and everything like that. Because if I had money in my sole account that we were using to live off, then if I died, then she would be able to access it straight away, even though she is my wife. It'd be far harder. On a joint account, she can just go and access that money straight away because her name is on it. Now, there is a one benefit that people don't realise on joint accounts is that if you remember back to the financial crisis when everything was going a bit wrong and people worried that banks were going to go bust, then there is the financial services compensation scheme that covers you for up to £85,000. So if a bank goes bust, if you've got anything up to £85,000, then that is a government-backed government, government -backed scheme that will ensure you get your money back. If you've got a joint account, then that cover is doubled to £170,000. Now, there are some nuances on that. Go and Google the Financial Services Compensation Scheme because that cover is for a per banking licence. So it's not for each brand. So HSBC and First Direct, for example, they are have one banking license. They might be two brands, but they're one banking license, which means you only get covered for £185,000 or £170,000 in a joint account. Now, the cons. There are cons. Of course, you've got to be able to trust the other person's not going to run off with the money and empty the account because they are entitled to if their name is on it. They don't have to ask your permission. Um, you have to be honest about all your spending. And of course, you're going to be both responsible for any overdraft on an account. So it's not just about the money that is in credit. It's about the money that you could be in debt as well. Now, one of the things, if you get a joint account, you have to be aware of is that you become financially linked to somebody. So it means that if somebody's got a bad credit rating and then you have a joint account with them, you become financially connected and it will start to impact your own credit rating. So you have to bear that in mind, particularly if your partner has got a poor credit rating, you might not want to be have become financially connected and so might not want to take out financial products or joint accounts together. And of course, the final thing is that if you do break up, and we're basing this on a couple, but anybody can get joint accounts. You don't have to be a couple. But if you do break up for any reason or you fall out of friendship with somebody, then that will be messy if you get a joint account. So bear that in mind. Yep. So to summarise, should you get a joint account, things to think about before you go and take one out is, are you both on the same wavelength when it comes to assessing goals and aims with your money? Are you both saving for the same thing? Or is one of you going to go out on a spending spree because they see there's loads of money in the account? Another thing to consider is your credit scores. Consider your credit scores before you take money out. Have you both got a good credit score? Um, see one of our videos for checking your credit score before you go to take out a joint account because then you know whether either of your credit scores will be affected. Also, if you do fall out with the person you're sharing an account with and you cannot come to decision on how you're going to agree settling the funds, you can cancel the mandate on the account and that means that the funds are frozen in the account and then until you come to an agreement, that's when you can both access the money. So bear in mind that two accounts can still work. You don't have to have a joint account. It can be better than one. But one last thing, if you are going to have a joint account, then make sure you both have access to logons online. So you've got internet banking so you can see what is going on. Okay, so that's it for this week's Millennial Money. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us over on our social media. So our Facebook, Money to the Masses, our Instagram, at Money to the Masses, and our Twitter, at Money to the Masses, with the number two. Thanks so much for watching.